to Royal Rebounds TV with Calvin and Barry. Just two crazy fans of the Sacramento Kings and they sharing their opinion. So be sure that you subscribe. It's for the fans, by the fans. Whether you chilling on the couch or wilding in the stands. For laid back conversations about the Kings, subscribe here. Staying down until we come up thinking this gonna be our year. We're here drinking beer, talking about the Kings. Be sure you subscribe so you can hear that bell ring. Yeah. What's up, Kings fans? Welcome back to Royal Rebounds, a Sacramento Kings YouTube channel for fans by fans. Unfortunately, the Kings lose tonight to the Brooklyn Nets, 109-85. De'Aaron Fox leads all scores with 26 points, and he is actually the only Kings starter in double-digit scoring. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you'd like to join the royal family with Calvin, Vinny, and I, make sure you hit that subscribe button before the shot clock expires. That's right. What's up, everybody in the chat? How y'all doing tonight? Rough game for the Kings, of course. They really shot horribly, just under 26% from three, uh, which is way different than what they had been doing the past few games, especially guys like Harrison Barnes. So they really just shot their themselves out of this game here, even though they were able to kind of get back into it in that second quarter. The third quarter was a disaster. Seth Curry, I see a lot of people in here in the chat talking about Seth Curry. He's probably going to be the most underrated player in that trade. He's perfect for Brooklyn, and he had a fantastic game today. And he's got the right last name. If you're listening via your favorite podcast platform, we would appreciate a five-star rating. And if you would like to be a part of the show, you can always join us live after every game on YouTube. We'll be right back with your Kings Nightcap. We're here, we're drinking beers, and we're talking about your Sacramento Kings. Hmm. Shout out everybody in the chat tonight. Mike, I see you. Gothin, Jeff, Fred, welcome. Charlie, welcome, welcome, welcome. Dennis, Ivan, welcome, guys. Hopefully you had a wonderful day and evening watching Kings basketball. Unfortunately, the Kings do get worked in this game. They have an extremely slow start. I think they were down 30 to 13 some point in the first quarter. They yeah. were down by 19 in this game early. The Kings were able to rally back. They never led in this game. The most they were down by was 24 points. Only 12 assists tonight for Sacramento, 18 turnovers. They shot horribly in this game. And uh, yep. Calvin, I'm seeing a little bit of a pattern here of teams missing their first, second, maybe third <laughs> best player in the Kings cannot capitalize. That is true, although, you know, a little asterisk next to this one because even though the Nets were missing their top three players, they still have a lot of really, really good players on this team. Andre Drummond starts today for them. He's an all-star. Uh, Patty Mills, championship experience. He's been one of the best three-point shooters in the league all mm -hmm. season, as well as Seth Curry, who's his backcourt partner now. LaMarcus Aldridge, Hall of Famer, coming off the bench. Uh, this team still has a ton of talent. And the Kings just did not shoot well enough to play with anybody today. I mean, only 85 points. The, on the other side of the coin... They only gave up 109, only one 30-point quarter surrendered by the Kings defense. That was in the first quarter. They did get off to a really slow start. Um, they weren't really moving the ball as much today as we have seen in, in the past couple of games. Only 12 assists tonight, which is not enough. Mm -hmm. Part of that is just because they, they shot horribly, right? So there were a ton of open threes that were missed, which would have cre been credited as assists. But part of it is also that I think as they started struggling shooting more and more, it became sort of this isolation type game, especially in the second half. De'Aaron Fox just trying to get to the basket over and over and over again. Yeah, we got to see a little bit of Trey Lyles tonight, a little bit of Josh Jackson late in this game due to uh, you know the score. I love what I saw to Dante DiVincenzo in this game. I know he, he didn't shoot aggressive. well. Yeah. But I, I am just shocked at how good of a rebounder this guy is. It, yeah. it is truly incredible. He's a total player. He's and he does down, stand out with those awesome shoes, too, which is yeah. which is <laughs> yes, pretty cool. Does. But we're going to talk about him here in a little bit more. But I, I just love what I saw from him. We saw a couple runs tonight by both teams. The Kings had a 15-4 to run in the second quarter to bring them back into this game. 
Uh, and they were only down by one at one point. But like you mentioned, they didn't shoot well. They turned the ball over too much. And the Nets were just able to close out the game late. Yeah. And the Nets got out in transition, too. Transition threes are a killer for a lot of teams. Sacramento is definitely one of those teams that gets killed more uh, than other teams in the NBA by those. And when you have, you're playing against guys like Patty Mills and Seth Curry, uh, you better be picking up in transition. Otherwise, they're going to kill you. And that, that's what happened today. Yeah, we saw Sabonis pick up his third foul, you know, right around halftime, first part of the third quarter in this game. It didn't really seem to affect him too much. He wasn't as aggressive as he normally is, and I think the size of a guy like Andre Drummond really affected his rebound ability oh, yeah. in this game. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, when you're missing shots and just the whole rhythm's off, it, it really makes it tough on every single player to do what they do best. However, I did see him protecting the basket tonight, and he was very, very active down below. Unfortunately, it doesn't really show much on the stats sheet with only one steal, one block, three turnovers for him tonight. But it just goes to show how new of a team this is. Like, we have all these new guys that have come in, six new guys in the past week, all being integrated into a, a new offense, a new team. And uh, they need they need some practice. Yeah, they definitely need practice. They need reps, game reps, practice reps, all of that stuff. I, you know, I, I still – it's one game. Uh, the Kings were not going to win every game for the rest of the season, even though they might have to win the overwhelming majority of them just to get sneak into the play-in tournament with the hole that they've dug themselves. But, you know, their defense – really it wasn't horrible today I mean I wouldn't even really call it bad they gave up a few open shots um, the transition defense was not that great Fred thank you very much we appreciate you a lot um, but they you know a lot of these were contested shots Seth Curry De'Aaron De Fox was hounding him all over the court he was playing great deny defense mm -hmm. but Seth Curry's a phenomenal shooter he's one of the best in the game and he, he made some tough shots today that's the way the cookie crumbles yeah. sometimes. But only giving up 109 points, like, I'll take that every single game. You know, this is one of the best. I realize no Kyrie, no KD, all that stuff. But it, they're still one of the best offensive teams in the NBA. Yeah, Gotham, it, birthday or anniversary today? 25th anniversary? Is that wedding anniversary? Oh, wow. Either congratulations. Way, congratulations and cheers to you. On Valentine's Day, nonetheless. That's that makes a lot of sense. I yeah. bet a lot more people have anniversaries yeah. <laughs> on Valentine's Day. It's probably like the most yeah. anniversary day of all. But um, so I got to say here, Calvin, some things that really pointed or, you know, just shot out to me in this game. We talk about energy. Uh, we talk about effort. I still saw that in this game tonight. You know, the, yeah. even though the Kings were down, they didn't shoot well. They didn't give up. I saw a guy smiling on the court, not in a bad way, not of like, oh, we're getting blown out by 20. Um, I'm going to smile here and talk to all the other players and stuff like that. But it, it actually looks like these guys enjoy playing with each other on the court. You know, they're still communicating. Yes, they didn't make shots tonight, but they had the energy and they were out there. They were still communicating. They were talking. They were passing the ball and uh, they just looked like they were having fun. Yeah, I, you know, I think there's this is still kind of the honeymoon phase for getting right past the trade deadline, right? I mean, if you're these players that came over from Indiana, maybe not Justin Holiday and uh, Jeremy Lamb, but certainly Sabonis, they've been hearing that there's a trade in the works for months and months and months now. I mean, they mm -hmm. announced very early on that they were looking at a, a retooling or a rebuild. Um, so when you have that hanging over your head for a long time, it will definitely get to you and, and getting this change of scenery, a fresh start with new teammates, that's going to be reinvigorating for you. Absolutely. And you can make the same case for these other guys, Dante DiVincenzo. I mean, he, he's been lucky enough to be a part of a really great team for his whole career so far in Milwaukee, had a lot of great experiences, won a title, yep. uh, but he's kind of always been on the, the edge of in and out of that lineup. And, and when is he going to get, you know, a, a bigger chance? And now he finally has that. So, I'm sure that he is is feeling a lot the same way. And then for these Kings players, you know, they've got to be uh, thrilled, right? Yeah. First of all, not the Kings players that are still on this team didn't get traded. <laughs> even though 
everyone on the team probably thought maybe they were getting traded at one point here leading up to this deadline. But now you bring in a whole new squad pretty much or you know half a squad basically. You've won a couple of games for a team that has lost a lot like Sacramento just that alone you know, winning three out of four games, that's going to completely change your attitude and your, your uh, demeanor. Yeah, yeah. I like Dante a lot. I, I think that might be my next Kings jersey. He's going to be a DiVincenzo yeah. Kings jersey. Yeah. I, I, I just love everything he does on the court. But, um, yeah, as, as you were saying, three out of four is good. I, I think the Kings missed a big opportunity tonight. They would have loved to win this game, be on a three-game winning streak because sure. that next game against the Bulls, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, is going to be a very difficult game. It's always hard playing that last game, too, before the All-Star break. Guys are excited to see family members, to get right, out, have right. a little bit of a break. And then the Kings are going to have some time as well. To and it just so happens that a lot of the Bulls' best players won't be playing in that game. So you know what that means for Sacramento. <laughs> I hope not, man. <laughs> I, really, I really hope the Kings can pick it up there. But uh, let's take a look at the box score, Cal. Let's do it as I get it pulled up here. As you mentioned, am I connected, Vinny? I think so. Yes. Yep. All right, here we go. As you mentioned, De'Aaron Fox leading the way for the Kings tonight with 26 points, 9 of 18 shooting, not bad at all. Another 6 out of 7 game at the free throw line for him. I I've been so encouraged to see him step up and routinely knock down free throws every single night. The problem was they just didn't get much from anybody else. The team only shot 34% from the field, 25% from three. Uh, two other players in double figures scoring, da uh, Davion Mitchell and Dante DiVincenzo, both off the bench, 13 points and 12 points, respectively. DiVincenzo, eight rebounds and five steals in this game as yeah. well. He was everywhere. I, I think Alvin Gentry definitely gave him a vote of confidence after that first game that he played. Uh, I heard Mark Jones saying that Dante went to Coach Gentry on the bench uh, for this previous game and asked him, are you okay with the shots that I'm yep. taking? Like he's yep. nervous, you know, new team doesn't want to do says, too much. Are you open? And he said, are you open? So you, you saw him come in and immediately he's been on the floor for like 30 seconds. He takes two threes. Yep. And, and that's good. I mean, you know, the second three, I, I wasn't really thrilled about it. It was pretty deep, very early in the shot clock, but Hey, you, you're trying to, to break yourself in here. You, you like know, the get, enthusiasm. get some shots up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, unfortunately, there's just not really much else to talk <laughs> about for this team. Um, Mo Harkless tonight, only two shots. I mean, this was by far his worst game. Did he get in, hurt or something? Know, the past couple of weeks. I, I'm not really sure. I didn't see anything out only there. Only 18 but, minutes for him. I didn't yeah, see anything. And yeah. I actually liked what I saw out of him tonight. Like, uh, yeah, I love the I, lateral I mean, the, quickness and like staying in front of guys. And, and then they just didn't roll with him late in this yeah, game. Yeah, I think it was probably just one of those things where they, they got off put themselves in a hole early, got off to a slow start, and you're you're thinking, I've got a lot of these new guys on my bench. Maybe I try and get them some minutes here late yep. in the game, especially after the, that big run in the third quarter when the Nets uh, pulled away. And we got to see a lot more of Metu tonight also. And, you know, I, I like Metu. I, I like the athleticism, the energy from him. But he just is, is a much different defender than a guy like Mo Harkless. He doesn't have the lateral quickness to, to stay in front of guys. Uh, so it's a little puzzling for me, but... 19 big minutes for Metu tonight, seven points, four rebounds. And uh, we got to see some of these guys that we've been waiting on. Yeah, a very, very tiny taste of them, just three minutes apiece for Trey Lyles and for Josh Jackson. Jackson gets up two shots. Trey Lyles doesn't even attempt a shot. So in the post game, I know Matt Barnes was talking about Harrison Barnes, and he was like, yeah. you know, one of the guys who I've played with and I really like him a lot, who I've been kind of disappointed with this season is Harrison Barnes. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, normally you know what to expect from him, but he's kind of been all over the place, right? Like he started out this year so hot, then he, he wasn't playing so good, then he started to come back up again. But it's just, it seems like there's games where he's just taken out of the game, like mentally or just not aggressive, maybe not on the defensive end of the floor, but definitely on the offensive end of the floor. You know, three and nine tonight, only six points. I think we saw him just a few nights ago, like take, what is it, seven or nine shots and have like 20 points? Yeah, 30 points, so, I think, actually. On yeah, seven rebounds for him tonight, two assists. Um, we got to see more from Harrison Barnes. Definitely. That was one of my keys to the game coming in tonight. I felt like Harrison and De'Aaron Fox, 
you know, the Fox and the, and the Falcon, they, they had a, a really good opportunity here to lead the way. I knew it was going to be tough for uh, Sabonis having to go up against Andre Drummond. And then you have LaMarcus Aldridge come off the bench. Those are two real, I mean, those are two all-star centers that you have to deal with, Yeah. you know, the whole night, uh, the entire entirety of the game. So um, the, the Nets still have a bunch of really good versatile wing defenders, though. James Johnson was really big for them in this game. He was very big on defense, made it physical and tough inside for a lot of these guys like Harrison Barnes, and, and he just struggled to, to really get momentum and get anything going. Yeah, Bruce Brown started out this game so hot for the Nets. Yeah, I think he's he been was like five for five all at over one the point. place for them this year. It's Yeah. He's, he's been a really good utility player for them. Played a ton of positions, too. Yeah, Brian, Seth Curry was involved with uh, James Harden, Ben Simmons trade, so that's how he ended up with the Nets, and he absolutely killed the Kings tonight. 10 of 18 from the field, 23 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. He was doing Curry things. And then also LaMarcus Aldridge, 8 of 11, 19 points for him. Big shots, too, big contested shots for him. Yep. We got to see Rashawn Holmes come off the bench again in this game, kind of establishing this new role as the backup center for the Kings. I don't know when or if we're even going to see Alex Len again. Yeah. You know, he talked about how it was an easy decision for him to re-sign with the Kings, and he was so excited to be on this team. Mm -hmm. You and I like what we see out of Alex Len, but he seems to be more of a, a matchup-specific type guy that you, you throw out there in certain situations. But 22 minutes for Rashawn tonight, 2 of 6 from the field, only four points, six rebounds, a steal. We got to see him hit that push shot, which yep. seems like it's been a while. But what would you like, what would you dislike out of Rashawn's game tonight? Um, I, I liked that he was just kind of picking his, his spots again more. He, he looked more like more like himself. I mean, that one huge dunk that he ends up missing in the third quarter, I haven't really seen him attack the rim like that in a long time. You know, So I, I liked – seeing that it, again it like you said he's just kind of gonna have to continue to get used to this new role of coming off the bench and he's also playing with a completely different group of players yeah. like most of these guys coming off the bench now weren't even on the kings for you know last only, last week only two so, guys only yeah. two guys that came off the bench with Rashawn Holmes exactly. played on the kings which is crazy so it's gonna take some time and uh you know I still think it really depends a lot on his his mental state, his attitude, how he's going to approach the rest of the season, knowing that his his role on this team has drastically changed. Alex has got an awesome comment here. Uh, I'm okay with Buddy or with Dante taking Buddy shots because he doesn't play Buddy defense. Hey, <laughs> I, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's a, fantastic, dude. I'm so excited about this bench squad. Like. You know, we all talked about a few years ago with, with Shumper, right? We had the Liddy committee coming yeah. off the bench. and yeah. But, dude, this this lineup, I, I love Davion Mitchell, Dante DiVincenzo. You have Rashawn Holmes, who I think is a starting quality center. And then you have these guys like Metu, who can have huge games. Still going to see what, we're, what we can get from Trey Lyles and a guy like Josh Jackson. Uh, you know, Damian Jones didn't play, Keita didn't play, Lewis King or Alex Len. But... This Kings team has a pretty awesome bench. And just looking at those two guards in DiVincenzo and Mitchell, I love the combination. And that really makes it hard on a lot of other teams in this league. And I think as the season progresses, we're going to see times where Fox and Sabonis are able to sit on the bench, get some rest, mm -hmm. like we saw them do in the third quarter in this game. And the Kings aren't going to fall behind a bunch of points like they have in the past. Yeah, I think that the the total team defense, whether it's the starters or the bench, is is going to continue to improve over the rest course of the rest of this season. The question is how much improvement can they really make in that short amount of time? But when you're as bad as the Kings have been over the past few years, any type of improvement is going to be very very impactful yeah. for the team. Yeah, Brian, that Rashawn dunk would have been so dope, man. Yeah, I'm it, I'm it would really have been bummed. Great. And yeah, as you mentioned, Terrence Davis is out for the rest of the season. Kings are cold today. Move on. All good. I, I feel the yeah. exact same way. Yeah, I mean, they're on the road. You know, they really haven't. They started off the year playing really well on the road, but they have played horribly on the road lately. Yeah. So, you know, the fact that they, like you said earlier, kept on battling, 
uh, even when they got off to that super slow start, got down big early in the first quarter. The old Kings team before the trade deadline, it would have been over. Oh, man. Yeah. They'd be down 30 at halftime. Not this team, though. They yeah. were right back in it. Hey, Nikki, welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's funny. You know, like my whole demeanor has changed watching the game too, right? Like you said, if this was a month ago or just a few weeks ago, I would have been like, oh, this game's over. I thought the Kings had a had an opportunity in this game. I, I still had confidence in them with six minutes left that I'm like, okay, you make a couple shots here, you cut it to 10, and then, you know, you, you get a couple stops on defense, maybe a layup, a couple easy buckets. Yeah. You're right back into this game. And it, it's funny because as a fan watching on TV, and we're, what, 3,000 miles away, I still have that confidence in the team. I can only imagine what it feels like on the bench and in the locker oh, room sure. of those guys that are like, hey, we still have a shot in this game. Yeah. No, no, I totally agree. Um, I mean, the Kings really end up losing this game. Basically, it comes down to two runs. The the Nets run in the beginning of the first quarter and the end of the third quarter. Yep. You know, if the Kings are able to to make a couple more stops and hit a couple more field goals to break those two runs up, I think it's a totally different game. Yeah, and there's there's a couple points in this game. Not that it really cost the Kings the win, but I was disappointed with the referee calls in this game. There was that challenge, I think, in the third quarter that I thought should have gone the way of the Kings. There was another play where, where Dante saves the ball right on the corner. Yep. It looked like he saved it before he stepped out of bounds. And then just calls with, you know, Sabonis getting contact, De'Aaron Fox getting contact. Yeah. And Davion these things, Mitchell, for some reason, the guy, they will not give him a charge. I don't know yeah, what it is. They just crazy. will not give him a charge. It's crazy. And we don't like to blame this. You know, I'm not blaming this loss on the referees because it's not. This is solely on the Kings for not shooting well in this game. But – when things like that start to compile over and over again, it really hurts your confidence as a player when you're like, dude, what can I do out here? I I'm getting worked. Like, especially like you're saying for the charge calls is it's like a, a charge is such a difficult play because you're literally putting your body on the line yeah. and like, okay, hit me. And if you do that over and over again and you're not getting any calls, what like human nature tells you not to do it again. Right, right. And, and that one, you know, it, it was – it, it really could have gone either way. I've seen Davion take some – they weren't called charges, but I've seen him take some f sure fire charges earlier mm. this year that he did not get the calls for. This one, he was still in a you know good defensive position. He was just not – he didn't quite beat the guy totally to the spot. I think it was Cam Thomas, but – He had a great game too. He had a great game as well. And, and you know, the, again, that's like – this Brooklyn roster, there's a reason why – People were all saying at the beginning of the year that this is the most talented roster in basketball. Yeah. And they just traded away an MVP, and they're still probably one of the two or three most talented yep. rosters in basketball. So they've got tons of guys that can play. Yeah, Katie's still out with injury. Kyrie Irving couldn't play because it was a home game. I still haven't really heard what's going on with Ben Simmons and when he might be available. But, you know, the guys they brought in, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, both played great tonight. And it ends up in a Brooklyn Nets win. Anything that really jumped out at the team stats? I, I know we talked about field goal percentage. We talked about steals. Or I mean, sorry, assists. We talked about turnovers. Anything else here that really, really jumped out to you? No, I mean, that, that pretty much covers it for me. Obviously, the shooting numbers for the Kings are, are really hard to look at. Um, and then the, you see the Nets shoot over 50%. You know, that's a huge hole to dig yourself out of. But, yeah, for me, the biggest thing is the assists. Yeah. Because we've seen this team just in the, the couple of games that we've had these new players on the roster. They're really moving the ball very well together. It doesn't look like the same offense they had before the trade deadline where at times the ball would move you know, really well around the perimeter. Um, and then it would just get into De'Aaron Fox's hands or Buddy Heald's hands. And you, you know, it's a black hole. It never comes out. Yep. They've been much, much better at uh, – you know, finding guy, open guys cutting. They can play inside out now with Sabonis, which is something they haven't been able to do. But today, uh, you know, because of the missed shots and also just a little bit less movement on the court, 12 assists, not going to get it done for this team. Yeah, another thing that really jumped out to me was fast break points. Only four yeah. fast break points tonight for Sacramento. 17 
for Brooklyn. I, I feel like that's an area where the Kings really can uh, succeed, you know, is in these fast break opportunities. But when you're turning the ball over, stuff like that, it really makes yeah. it hard. But I do have to say, it was really exciting to not see when the Kings are down, they just start jacking up threes. Right. You know, like it, there's something about that right it's like a love hate relationship because you're down 20 and you're like oh three threes and i'm i'm right back in the game but they have to be good shots and they have to go in (laughs) if they don't then you know you you put yourself in even worse position because you're you're basically having an empty possession and you're giving the ball over to the other team that's something we saw way too often with guys like buddy healed on this team we did not see that in this game tonight. Yes, they took a couple bad shots. I, I know DiVincenzo had an air ball in this game or possibly two air balls from three, but they're not just jacking up shots. They're actually playing well. They're playing within an offense. They just honestly didn't shoot well in this game tonight. And that, I mean, you have bad night shooting. Yeah, you, you do have bad night shooting. And, you know, again, we, we've mentioned it a couple of times, but the more reps – the more practice time that this team gets together, I think they're going to be, especially the starting five, is going to be a really good half-court offensive team. I mean, being able to play four out with reliable shooters and one inside with a guy in Sabonis who is capable of getting his own shot and finding open teammates, that they have a lot of different um, you know, sets and options that they're now able to run because of that. They can be a very dynamic offense. Uh, Justin Holiday and Harrison Barnes are great cutters, cutting to the basket. So I, I think this team is going to be really good in the half court, you know, probably once we get into the, the first quarter of next season after they've had a, a bunch of reps. But I think you're right, too. They can also look to get out and run a little bit more. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Blazers and the Pelicans both win tonight. The they Kings the Spurs lose. Lost. The Spurs did lose. Let's take a look here at the standings. So your Sacramento Kings are currently 15 games below 500 again. They're at 22 and 37 on the season. Vinny, can you show my screen here? There are three spots from the bottom here. You have the Spurs at 22 and 36, just above them. Then you have the Pelicans at 23 and 34. And then the Trailblazers seem to still be holding on to that 10th spot yeah. at 24 and 34. Portland maybe knew something that the rest of us did not. I, I mean, I they're playing really inspired basketball right now. Anthony Simons. Yeah. He's we've beast. talked about him, you know, before on this show. I, I think the dude is officially here in the nba now him and damian lillard together are going to be a pretty scary combination i think when dame comes back josh hart had a great game for them today so you know they're they're clinging on hanging on here but all it's going to come down to maybe the last day of the season between these yeah. four teams like it, it could it's, they're really really tight right now and i don't see any one team being able to get that much separation you know from here to the rest of the season so it's going to be a, a race to the to the bottom of the finish line <laughs> <laughs> with this playing tournament it, it's just adds a whole new other element of like surprise which is crazy you know if, if two years ago if i were to tell you calvin the eighth seed in the west is the clippers and they're two games below 500 you'd be like get out of here dude the west right. is never below 500 right. then you look at a team like the blazers they're 10 games below 500 and they still have a chance to make the playoffs yeah. which is crazy the Kings are two wins behind them. You know, it's not a lot, but you know what they say, you, all you need is a chance, right? Yeah. So if you are you able to make that 10th seed, dance. you have your ticket to the dance and potentially maybe due to injuries or, or just, you know, the team actually gaining some more chemistry and playing good basketball, Yeah, they could potentially upset a team and make it into that, into that uh, play in tournament and into the playoffs. But just looking here at the eighth seed, Kings are six games back. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not do- bad. I think, it's doable. I mean, six I games is a lot with only games, 23 games 23. left. That That's a steep hill to climb. But, you know, I really think if you're looking at, at the Kings here as a fan, as a member of the team, the coaching staff, whatever, 
I personally don't really think there's a bad way they can end this season. Yeah. You either make the play-in tournament, which gives you an opportunity to get into the real tournament, which would be great, right? I mean, yes, the draft pick won't be as good then. We're going to but a playoff I, I think game that there's, they make the playoffs. There's a lot of really good things that this team could take away from having the, the experience of being in the playoffs. And then on the flip side of that, if you don't make the playoffs, you've gotten this time now to kind of get – the new players on this team integrated and, and get some develop some chemistry and all that. And then your draft pick is much, much better. So I really think the Kings, they're not necessarily playing with house money here at this point, but Monty has set them up for success going into next season. I think regardless of how the year ends. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I got to give, give a shout out to Monty for doing a great job, rebuilding, adding talent, keeping your draft picks, uh, he said that these trades didn't just make us better this year, but it made us better for the future exactly. as well. And he has the flexibility. And maybe we'll see a big move in the offseason. I'm not quite sure. All right, Calvin, I think I'm done talking about this game. Anything else you want to mention? Did we go over your keys to the game? We did not go over the keys we to can the game. touch on those real quick. And then yeah, we'll, we'll, then we'll, we'll just go on. real quickly because, you know, my keys to the game were really more of a uh, – they, they weren't necessarily analytical. It, it was more of just this team needs, you know, more reps together. Number one was to keep the keep working on the chemistry, which, you know, even if you lose and shoot, have a tough shooting night, every minute, every play that they run together, they're working on that chemistry. Number two uh, was get the bench going. They did a little bit better tonight. I mean, it was great to see Dante DiVincenzo, you know, kind of, feel a little he definitely looked more comfortable he didn't shoot yeah. well but he looked like he was more aggressive he was looking for a shot they just didn't get you know the maybe the necessary uh well they didn't get anything out of their starters other than De'Aaron Fox so that, that put him in a big hole right there uh and then number three was the Fox and the Falcon De'Aaron had a, a good game again 26 points Harrison Barnes did not have a good showing offensively today and that uh, definitely contributed to the loss Yep. Well, if you need to break the seal, here's your chance. We're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into your Sacramento Kings with Around the Crown.